dear doctoral students, dear guests, dear participants in the roundtable discussions, on behalf of the Bonn Graduate Center and of the International Office, um, I welcome all of you to Bonn University's first day for international doctoral students. Um, I'm particularly happy that we have such a diverse group here today, representing not only all large or major faculties at the University of Bonn, mathematics and natural sciences, arts, law and economics, medicine, agriculture, but also more than 20 nations just in this room. My name is Kai Zix, I'm the coordinator of the Bonn Graduate Center and it is my pleasure to um, open this afternoon with some remarks on careers with a doctorate, which is, as you know, the um, theme of our event here today. If it's all right with you, I'd like to provide you with um, two things. First of all, some thoughts on how we came up with organizing this event here. And um, secondly, um, I'd like to introduce to you some typical career paths in German academia and also beyond academia. So my talk is intended to equip you with some basics for the ensuing roundtable um, discussions over there, um, which will start at approximately three o'clock. Um, some of you will know some of the aspects I will um, dwell upon, but yet I hope that um, I can provide you with the bigger picture on the one hand and deliver you some new interesting impulses on the other. All right. So last year, the Bonn Credit Center carried out an online survey regarding the conditions of doctoral studies at Bonn University. Some of you will have taken part in this survey, um, which raised overall a lot of interest. In total, there were more than 1,200 doctoral students of this university who participated. And of these, 15% were international, so non-German, which made approximately 200 participants. And although we've known and we've um, always been very proud of the fact that um, there are many um, international researchers on the doctoral level at Bond University. The survey motivated us to strengthen our efforts with regard to the concerns of this group and this group which is, which is you here. Um, in fact, the this, this survey showed some notable discrepancies between German and international participants. And what we realized is um, that, that our international doctoral students are not just doctoral students with another passport, but with a whole set of distinct interests, needs, and wishes. Although, of course, not in every respect, but in some. And we, we took great care in evaluating this survey, um, and now we take action to implement some of the suggestions which you made in, in the um, survey. So to dwell a bit more on um, the content of the survey, the most striking difference between German and international doctoral researchers regards their career plans, interestingly. And we asked, do you wish to pursue a scientific career following graduation? And here every sixth German doctoral student is set on an academic career. And another third declared that they hope to pursue an academic career, but would consider other options as well. So yet international doctoral researchers, and this is interesting, exhibit a completely different preference. You see, 40% of um, the international participants in the survey favor an academic career above all other options. And yet 44% aim at pursuing a career in science, even if they're interested in other career tracks as well. So only 15%, 16% over here, um, in contrast to more than half of the Germans, 53%, favor a career outside academia. To address this um, discrepancy, we decided to offer a platform for exchange on academic and on non-academic um, career plans particularly aimed at doctoral, international doctoral students. And this is the reason for the event here today. And um, at this point, I'd also like to take the opportunity and thank the German Academic Exchange Service for providing us with the uh, financial means to realize our ideas within the EPIT for All funding program. So seeing that most of you, 
wish to stay in academia, I'd now like to outline some typical career paths within the German academic system, which tend to be slightly different from what you might know from your home institutions or home countries. Before um, no, doing this, I would also like to take the opportunity, or after doing this, I'd also like to take the opportunity to, in a second step, draw your attention to chances that might open up outside German um, universities, but still in Germany. So, what do careers at German universities typically look like? Which are the next steps after a doctorate, and where do you proceed from there? Before answering these questions, let me stress that ways towards a permanent position at a German university have become manifold for 10 to 15 years now, perhaps which is why the following will only describe the most common career paths. Others are um, possible. So, first of all, there's a classical way of becoming a professor at a German university. After finishing your PhD, and sometimes after an additional time as postdoctoral researcher, you take a position as a professor's research assistant and as a research assistant, you usually get a contract of up to six years in the best case. Um, you teach on undergraduate level and in the ideal world, at the end of your contract, you will have terminated your so-called habilitation thesis. What is habilitation? That's perhaps roughly the um, German equivalent to the Anglophone second book or a kind of a second major achievement um, in academia that you reach. Um, and in contrast to what some of you might expect or know from, from other countries, German professors are not only um, required to be specialists in a particular research question like one cell signaling pathway or Shakespeare, um, but, but German professors need to be generalists in their broader research discipline as well. So in habilitation is supposed to give evidence to this ability to represent and teach a discipline at large. So this was the classical way, and until approximately 15 years ago, habilitation was the one and only way to become a professor in Germany. And it's still rather common in some disciplines, particularly in the humanities. However, today there are at least two alternatives to habilitation and to reach the eligibility for a position as professor. I will tell you something about these two alternatives. The first of these is the so-called junior professorship, um, for which you theoretically may apply directly after obtaining your PhD degree or after an um, in-between period as a postdoc. As junior professor, and this might not be the best wording, in my opinion. Um, I think that the, the American associate professor, which is a bit similar, sounds a bit more respectful, but it's the official term, junior professorship. Um, the, the junior professor has uh, normally a fixed term contract of up to six years. Um, uh, he gains the, the, this important, the academic independence of a real professor. So this is the contrast between the junior professorship and the research assistant. And, um, and you have all the professor's rights and duties. And after successfully completing, completing um, the junior professorship, you are eligible to apply for a real professorship as though you have obtained habilitation. And in some cases, and these cases have become more important for some years now, junior professorships also in Germany come with a tenure track option. You might have heard of that, um, which means the junior professorship may be converted into a permanent full professorship after a final and, of course, positive evaluation. Okay. The second and also very attractive alternative to habilitation is the so-called junior research group leadership. In contrast to positions as research assistant or as junior professor, you apply for a junior research group leadership, complicated term, not at the university directly, but at a third-party funding organization, so at an uh, independent external funding organization. 
So there you present an independently developed research project that you wish to work for on for a, pe on for a period of five to six years. And um, if you are lucky to get this um, junior research group leadership, um, you will be equipped with a small research team of, say, two doctoral students, a postdoc, or one technical assistant. Um, junior research group leaderships are funded by a number of German funding organizations, uh, for example, by the German Research Foundation, where it's the so-called Emmy Noether program, or by the Volkswagen Foundation, the, the so-called Freigeist Fellowship, or particularly prestigious by the European Union, you might have heard of the ERC starting grant. However, the first step before acquiring a junior professorship or a junior research group leadership, and sometimes also before acquiring the research assistant position, is the, come on, the postdoc. Um, and this is often indispensable in many disciplines, at least. Um, the postdoc is a period of two to four years. You are expectant, expected to further deepen your expertise in a specialist subject, and you are um, required to acquire new skills and learn new research methods and to produce relevant publications in peer-reviewed academic journals. In terms of career development, one could say that the postdoc is a transitional phase. So on the one hand, it is a first step towards um, academic independence. And this is also why many people um, recommend to change places to, um, so to speak, get away from your um, doctoral supervisors or mentors. Um, on the other hand, though, postdoctoral researchers still work under the guidance of experienced researchers, of course, and are still regarded as learners. So you might wonder how you will be able to acquire such a postdoctoral position. Usually they are advertised by research institutions worldwide, so in Germany as well. And alternatively, you can apply for a postdoctoral stay abroad, meaning in this case outside Germany, at some third-party funding organizations. Let me briefly introduce to you some of the externally funded postdoc programs for which you may apply once you've completed your doctoral studies. So in Germany, there are a few programs which support postdoctoral stays abroad. The Research Fellowship by the German Research Foundation, the Fyodor Lünen Fellowship by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation, the Postdoctoral Scholarship by the German Academic Exchange Service, to name but a few. In general, all these programs are open for all researchers independent from the field of research and from the country of origin. In practice, however, um, non-German citizens are required to meet two important preconditions. Um, these preconditions stem from, from the principle of all these um, research foundations that German funding institutes normally only finance researchers who follow a career in German academia in the long run. Um, and therefore, firstly, you need to have spent the last three to five years within the German, German academic system and need to be integrated in this system. And second, you need to convince reviewers that you hope to return to Germany once you left for the postdoc abroad. So in some, these programs are more interesting for those of you who have already come to Germany, also before their PhD degree, so for the MA, for example, and for those who wish to return to the German academic system after the postdoctoral stay abroad. Okay. Instead, you may also apply for a Marie Skwodowska Curie Fellowship at the European Union, where these requirements are not relevant. Especially the so-called European Fellowship may be interesting for some of you. Here you apply for a one to two year stay um, in another European country or in a European country which is associated with the European Union, for example, Switzerland or Israel or Norway. All research fields are covered here as well. And the fellowships provide an allowance, sorry, um, for, to cover your living, um, your travel costs, your family costs. Um, it's awarded to your host organizations, and uh, usually, a, which is usually a university, a research center, or a company within Europe. So 
it is of great importance that you choose this host institution very carefully because the most important criterion um, which decides about whether you get this um, kind of fellowship or not is um, whether you are, will be able to acquire new skills and further develop your research profile at this chosen institution. So calls for Marie Skłodowska Curie um, fellowships are advertised annually and the deadline is always in September. The next one is in, uh, on September 14th in 2016. And the approval right lays about 20%. So it's not perfect, but also not too bad. So should you be interested, interested in learning more about all these programs, please note that we will host an info day on postdocs abroad early next year. And for the time being, I would like to um, recommend you our website for further info on all these externally funded postdoctoral programs. It's, some of you might know it, www.phd.uni-bonn.de. Okay. So while all these career options here seem and are in fact attractive and transparent, Chances to achieve a permanent position at, the, uh, at a German university are, in fact, not too high and should not be whitewashed. Doubtlessly, there is a severe bottleneck problem at the German university system at the moment, which means research funding options are manifold on the doctoral level, but get increasingly competitive with each, with, with each step on the career ladder. So, apart from professorships, there are only a few permanent positions to be held in German university research. One example for such a position would be the so-called Akademische Rat, which is roughly the German equivalent for the British university lecturer. Other examples would be positions that include a greater amount of research administrations, such as a Studiengangsmanager, which is a person who is mainly responsible for the running of a degree program. So, but overall, only 5 to 10 percent of all PhD holders in Germany, German and international, end up with a permanent position at a German university. So, although not everyone with a PhD wishes to stay in academia, there are and will be many researchers, or some researchers at least, who long for a university position, but will not be able to realize this desire for sheer statistics. So, if this is the case, we need to ask which other options there are for a career with a doctorate. Particularly if you aim for a career in science, as so many international doctoral researchers claimed in our survey. So first of all, by far not all research in Germany is carried out at universities. It's important to know. A glance at the distribution of publicly funded research shows that so-called non-university research organizations receive almost as much funding from federal and state governments as all German universities taken together. So, which is, um, to drop a number, more than 11 billion euros per year. Now, what are these non-university research organizations? You might have heard of the Max Planck, of Max Planck Institutes, of Helmholtz Centers, Leibniz Institutes, or Fraunhofer Institutes. Overall, there are more than 250 of these research institutions throughout Germany. Some of you may know one of these institutes very intimately. Um, this might be the case if you are a doctoral researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics, for example, in the Bonn pedestrian zone or at the German Center for Neurodegenerative Diseases, uh, located at Venusberg. Or some of you may even work for the Research Museum Alexander König, only one subway stop away from, from here. All these institutions belong to the um, non-university research organizations. And there are more of them in the wider Bonn region, as well as in Germany at large. In general, these non-university research organizations carry out long-term research projects facing complex challenges of our present-day societies. Challenges like climate change, um, energy reduction, education, social integration, and so on. 
non-university research organizations often deal with questions from the natural and life sciences. And, and in these cases, they maintain major research infrastructures and work towards developing key technologies of the future. However, there are also institutes in the humanities and in the social sciences. There exist, for example, Max Planck Institutes for Empirical Aesthetics, for the History of Sciences or for um, Cultural Anthropology. And there are Leibniz Institutes for Eastern European History or German Language and so on. In many cases, these um, institutes require less fluency in German, particularly when the working language is, in fact, English. At universities, however, this is important to say, German language skills are often inevitable. Many study programs, particularly on the BA level, you may know that, are offered in German only. And German is also essential when it comes to research administration, as some of you may have experienced yourselves painfully. <laughs> Um, institutes of the Max Planck Society or the Helmholtz Association, on the other hand, are not involved in teaching and for this reason and others as well, um, the share of international scholars is higher there than at universities. In total, such institutions are attractive employers for international PhD holders looking for a career in science. Research in, in Germany, finally, is not restricted to publicly funded research. Rather, two-thirds of the research and development expenditures in Germany are spent by the industry. So this is the, the bright blue block here, and the bit darker block are the non-university organizations, and the blue on the at the bottom are the universities. The German companies belong to the most innovative in Europe. They are especially concerned with applied research Examples of successful technology transfer can be found, among others, in the areas of environmental research, pharmaceutical research, or new materials. Companies with the highest R&D spending rates in Germany are not surprisingly found in the field of automotive production, like, although you never know for what kind of stuff Volkswagen spends this money. Um, <laughs> Daimler, BMW is also there. Um, in the fields of technical devices like um, Bosch and Siemens, pharma production, like here have a, we have Bayer, Böhringer, Ingelheim, BASF, and or software development, SAP. Industry research differs, of course, in some ways from research in universities, as, as you know it. It is target-oriented and consumer-oriented. And additionally, public, publicly funded basic or blue sky research and industrially funded applied research are separated by different time regimes, while large-scale fundamental research carried out at universities often has a time frame of 10 to 15 years, for example, at collaborative research centers. Research projects in entrepreneurial contexts are much shorter, less than a year or up to two years. And they are focused on quick economic utilization. So finally, industrial research is also more generously endowed and much better paid than research at universities or at non-university research organizations. Of course, some research disciplines are more apt for industrial research, particularly engineering, chemistry, pharmacy, biotechnology, also agriculture and computer sciences. Others like ancient philosophy or modern French literature are naturally more distant to this field of um, industrial, career industrial career opportunities. But those of you who majored in the humanities may never have had an inkling um, for joining an industrial career anyway. So this brings me to the last aspect of my introductory remarks. Careers with a doctorate do not necessarily need to be careers in science. Having successfully completed a doctorate does not only showcase your expertise in a particular field of research, including the handling of specialized research methods or broader analytical and synthetical skills. In addition, a doctoral degree gives evidence to manifold competencies and qualities. 
competences and qualities which are of utter importance for many professions, even if they're not directed, directly related to science. All of these skills build the basis for obtaining leading positions in professional sectors beyond frontier science and education, in policy making, in management, and in many other leadership roles in society today. <coughs> Let me briefly highlight some of the most important professional skills that all of you obtain by pursuing a doctorate. First, there are creativity and flexibility which are necessary preconditions for the realization of any research project. Creativity includes the ability for, to be flexible when approaching complex problems. And in the end, it means being able to manage projects with uncertain outcomes. Second, you all get gain insight into the fundamental principles of project management the capacity to take a project through all its stages, from the coming up with the original idea, to developing a plan, garnering the evidence, to communicating its um, results and their significance. Experience in project management is doubtlessly indispensable in any leadership career in German professions or worldwide nowadays. Third, there's the ability to work systematically and independently. As doctoral researchers, you learn to achieve results with minimum supervision, to take decisions independently and to present your work in a structured and well-organized manner. Fourth, and this applies to doctoral researchers, particularly in the natural and life sciences, but also to those of you who work in graduate schools, there's the ability to work in a team Jobs outside academia almost always require teamwork capacities, which include social and communicational skills, the capacity to harmonize work processes with colleagues, to compromise, to step back, or um, alternatively to come forward and take responsibility for a team. Fifth and rather complementary, the doctoral degree gives evidence um, of a high degree of self-management and self-discipline. By completing doctoral research, you demonstrate that you're able to persist, persist in achieving long-term goals, that you're self-motivated, and that you have the cap capacity to get through crises and setbacks. Sixth, um, as doctoral researcher, you acquire advanced oral and written communication skills. You are able to speak and present effectively in public to communicate complex concepts and to transfer new knowledge to scholarly communities as well as to society at large. So finally, there are several further skills that you may gain um, during your doctorate. Teaching skills for those of you who teach undergraduate students, leadership competencies for those who work with student assistants, or applying particularly to all of you, intercultural competencies which you demonstrate um, by obtaining your doctoral degree in a foreign country, which you can also could demonstrate by um, going to international conferences, by networking internationally, and so on. All of these nine competencies, and there are even more than the aforementioned, enable you to, and here I quote the League of the European Research um, Universities, the quote, to take up roles, in driving complex changes in society, to explore unknown frontiers in knowledge, to anticipate the questions that will matter in tomorrow's world, to take the intellectual risks by which major breakthroughs come, and to take action on the basis of these insights." End of quote. Recent numbers regarding the unemployment rates of PhD holders in Germany confirm this. According to a study carried out already in 2011, the general unemployment rate of employees with a doctoral degree is less than 3%, which is practically, practically nothing. Even if this number varies slightly depending on the respective research discipline, 
even in fields as biology or the humanities, far more than 90% are able to secure a job within the first year after completing the doctorate. What is more, 10 years after the completion of their doctoral studies, PhD holders show the highest satisfaction with their job situation with regard to the content of their work, their career perspectives, and their training opportunities. Only with regard to their work time, yeah, <laughs> PhD holders are less satisfied than employees without a doctoral degree. <laughs> so concluding and coming back to our event here today, I would like to stress that you are not only important to, for the job market or for societies in future. Already today, you as the international doctoral researchers are important for our university. You contribute to Bonn University's scientific success and, of course, to the high reputation that Bonn University has in, for research. Moreover, you are the living examples for the multicultural appeal, for the spirit of openness and diversity which Bonn University wishes to represent. And therefore, this event here today is also supposed to be a token of appreciation and a start to an ongoing dialogue between you and the university at large. So, a dialogue which we'll start in a minute with our roundtable um, discussions on career perspectives. Afterwards, we'll have a short coffee break of half an hour, then we'll hope to continue this dialogue with the World Café. We'll, um, first, we will meet back here at 4.30 um, and explain you the concept of this um, World Café. And, of course, we'll also continue the dialogue with the um, get-together and the dinner reception at 6.30. Um, even beyond today, we hope to embrace the exchange between the doctoral students um, and um, the university. For this reason, we have, building on our experience with the doctoral survey from 2014, drafted a new doctoral survey, particularly for international students. And we would be very glad if you were willing to participate in this survey as well. The, this survey inquires um, among other things, your motivation to come to Bonn and to stay in Germany, your assessment of the necessity of the German language um, at work and in your social life, or your wishes for more support through the university. The survey has opened this morning and will be open um, until December 1st. And we've printed these little flyers here that you may take home and which may remind you um, to, to get in online and spend some minutes on the questions and maybe win one of two of the high-quality e-book readers that we'll draw among all participants. Okay. Before handing over to Andreas Archut, I would like to present those people to you who have not only expertly organized this event today, but will also be happy to assist you during the day with any questions that you might have. A big thank you to Clara Kaminski and Alice Blankma but also to Sandra Kröger, who's not here at the moment, and Milos, Milos Mirosavic over there. Maybe you stand up for a second. Oops, okay. okay. Thank, you. thank you. So for the time being, I would like to thank you all again for joining us today and wish you an inspiring afternoon and many new acquaintances and, of course, some fun. Thank you very much. Thank you.